My first ever top 10 list since doing my YouTube channel, so let's do this. So 2014 I thought was a really good year for films, we had a lot of rubbish films which I'll touch about in my top 10 worst films, we had a lot of more or less average in the middle films, we had some really good films, we had some awesome films, but we're going to talk about the awesome slash really good films at the bottom in this list specifically. Now there's one thing I have to tell you right now, there's a lot of films that came out this year that I have not seen, so films like Birdman, Whiplash, uh, Air, what's it called, Nightcrawler, X-Men Days Future Past, uh, Fault in Our Stars, I've, Boyhood, I've not seen any of those films for different reasons. Birdman, Whiplash, they did not come out in my country, in the UK, um, and I just didn't get to watch the other ones, so those films specifically will not be on this list, and if you're one of those people who like art house films, like the really artsy kind of films, you, um, yeah, you're gonna hate this list, seriously. This list you're gonna despise and just like, oh my god, I absolutely hate your list. No, I'm done. No. You're gonna hate it. So that's my really rubbish impression of an art, art, art house kind of person, so yeah. But yeah, you're gonna hate this list, but this is my list, my list of my top 10 favourite films of the year, and let's just have some fun, because this is my first ever top 10 best list, so let's just get right into this. So coming at number 10, we have a film which, when I first heard about, I never expected to be on my top 10 list, and when I watched it, it taught me that everything is indeed awesome. Yeah, I'm talking about the Lego movie. I love the Lego movie because it was just such a really feel good film, you know what I mean? Uh, but apart from that, the voice cast was great, the animation was just insane, I mean, to think that that's actually animation, not actual Lego, because it looks like Lego, I mean, come on, you look, watch that film, everything's in Lego, I just, I loved it, and yeah, it was pretty feel good film as well, especially with that song, you know, everything is awesome, yeah, I love that song, <laughs> so Lego movie, number 10. I mean, at number 9 is a film that I was expecting to be a bit higher on my list, but given all the other films that came out, it just got pushed to the bottom. But I still really enjoyed this film, and that is The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. Even though Mockingjay Part 1 wasn't like the action-packed epic the trailer said it was, I still thought it was a really clever film in terms of it showing that revolutions and wars are fought more with um, propaganda instead of just like all guns blazing, which is what I'm hoping Part 2 are going to be anyway. But anyway, Mockingjay Part 1, still really enjoyed it, not the best Hunger Games film, but still gets number 9. Number 8 is a comedy film which I thought was the funniest comedy film of the year and that was 22 Jump Street. 22 Jump Street, I laughed my ass off because it was just hilarious, Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill were great together like they were in the first movie, even better in fact. I love the fact that it's just such a self-referential film, it just makes fun of itself so much throughout and plus it all just, it all gets wrapped up right at the end when it has what is possibly the funniest end credit sequence ever, I mean come on. How could you not look at end credit sequence as thing either number one that is hilarious and awesome or number two that's just really clever for me or both so 20 Jump Street really funny film gets number eight at number seven is a film a lot of people kind of divided on a little bit I really enjoyed it and that was the monster film Godzilla I thought Godzilla was very very entertaining I mean sometimes yeah it looks like there's going to be some epic fight and then it just like cuts away from it but when it does when Godzilla does fight and throw down with these things. It is amazing, I mean, at the end, throwing each other into buildings and things, and plus Godzilla has one of the very best deaths of the year as well, and in case you haven't seen the film, I won't spoil it, but trust me, one of the best deaths is in this film, and for that reason, and also the really epic, awesome monster action, and buildings falling down, and just the destruction of cities all around, Godzilla gets number seven. Coming at number six, and in terms of expectation versus reality, this film for me is actually the most surprising film of the year. I was going into it, expected it to be mm, average, but it came, I came out of it thinking, yeah, that's awesome. And that is Edge of Tomorrow, or Live, Die, Repeat, whatever it's called now. Edge of Tomorrow, which I'm just going to call it forever. Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt were really good in the film, and plus the film it feel, felt really fresh as well for some strange reason. I don't know, it just, it felt fresh. Yeah, I mean, like, he's, he's being reset every day. And it's kind of like Groundhog Day, which I haven't seen, sorry, but it's like Groundhog Day, it's like the same day over and over again, but it still felt fresh and really, really entertaining and quite funny sometimes as well. So it was really entertaining, the aliens were awesome, the action was awesome, and like I said, it was a surprise of the year for me. I was expecting this film to be like really average, just like, yeah, down the middle, yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be on my top 10 list, so, but Edge of Tomorrow really surprised me. 
gets number six. All right, the top five of my list, I was shifting around all the time. I mean, I was struggling to put them in some kind of order. I was like, right, is this film actually better than that? Is it better, is it worse, or at least good anyway? So I had to put them in some kind of order, so here we are. I mean, at number five is a film which I expected to be my number one. I wanted this to be number one, but just because it wasn't my number one doesn't mean it weren't good. I still loved the film, and that is The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. The Desolation of Smile was actually my number one film of 2013, so I had big hopes for this film. And don't get me wrong, I love this film. I thought it was really, really awesome. Pretty epic sometimes as well. It's just like, I felt, I felt really rushed sometimes. Like In particular, some important scenes felt pretty rushed. And how it kept coming back to that guy, that Alfred guy, yeah, that irritated me a little bit. But yeah, A Hobbit Battle of Five Armies, great conclusion to the Hobbit trilogy. I'm going to pick up the whole trilogy on Blu-ray when it comes out, and I'm going to watch them all with a big smile on my face. But Hobbit Battle of Five Armies, I respect it to be number one, but it's still number five, so that's not saying nothing, but yeah, Battle of Five Armies is number five. I mean, at number four is another film a lot of people are divided on compared to the guy's previous work, and that is Interstellar. Now, because I put this at number four, I don't automatically assume that I'm a Christopher Nolan fanboy who's going to defend this film to my dying breath. I mean, I will defend it because I think it was a really entertaining ass film. I just thought Interstellar had unbelievable special effects. I mean, it was unbelievably ambitious as well. I think this is probably the most ambitious film of the year. Because, come on, they're going into another galaxy. We've never seen that before. I mean, Christopher Nolan, he just took it to a next level in this film for me. And it was entertaining. It was intense as well. I mean, that like, was just going down in space, which was just powered on by that unbelievable score by Hans Zimmer. That's the thing that really makes it film. Every time I hear that score, when that the stuff's going down in space, I just, the more I hear it and the more I think about this film, the more I just really like it. So, Interstellar, really knockout film for me, and it gets number four on my list. Coming at number three is one of the best films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe to date, and of course, that is Captain America, The Winter Soldier. And when I say one of the best films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I mean that, and by that I mean not as good as The Avengers, but still, Captain America, Winter Soldier, it was... It was like a, it was a cross between a superhero film and like a kind of an espionage spy thriller, and that's what I loved about it. I thought it was really well, well shot. I thought it was really intense, really thrilling as well. Uh, Captain America, Chris Evans is really good as Captain America. And plus, the one thing I also give this film the most credit for is just changing up everything about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, when I when I was watching it, I was like, oh my god, how is that going to affect Avengers Two? How is it going to affect other films? And that's what I can't wait to see how it, how it affects the rest of the cinematic universe. And that's what I loved most about this film. Plus it was really entertaining and action packed and just a pretty badass movie. So Captain America Winter Soldier gets number three on my list. At number one and number two, they were interchanging all the time. I had to put them in some kind of order, so this is what I have put them in. Coming in at number two is a film which when I watched it, I was just blown away by how good it actually was. And that is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. But what is it to say about Planet of the Apes that hasn't already been praised enough? But anyway, Andy Serkis was just unbelievably awesome as Caesar. One of my favourite performances of the year by a guy doing a CGI creature. But anyway, Planet of the Apes was still really, really awesome. Pretty epic third act as well. And I love the, I love the mood of it as well, the tone. It's just like really dark and really gritty. And it, you just know that things are all different since the first one. And it, it steps up as well in terms of events, emotion, drama, special effects. Everything just gets stepped up in this film just like it should do with a sequel. So therefore, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes gets number two on my list. And here it is, my friends. Number one film, the film which I enjoyed the most in this year. And I enjoyed it for a lot of different reasons. And that film is Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think that a lot of people could have walked out of Guardians of the Galaxy and said, yeah, I want my money back. Because Guardians of the Galaxy is just unbelievably entertaining. I mean, you got that soundtrack going on, you know, the awesome mixtape, whatever it's called, with all that 80s and 70s music just thrown onto the screen, plus all the action, special effects, and the humour and the badassery from all the characters. How can you not enjoy this film? And it's just, I'm still surprised this is my number one as well, because I wasn't expecting this film to be as good as it was. I mean, because it was Marvel, expecting really high stuff, but not this high. Guardians of the Galaxy is just awesome for me, and for me, it's my number one film of 2014. So there you have it, those are my top 10 favourite films of 2014, and like I said, Art House people, I know you hated that whole list, but if you can enjoy my list for what it is, then 
What do you What do you think? I want to know what are your top ten favorite films of the year. Put it as a video response, comment, or go on nuts or whatever. Plus, I want to say to all my watchers and subscribers, thank you for watching um, my videos throughout this year. It's been really different. I've been changing a lot of stuff, but I hope to be more focused and a bit more like ready to do it in 2015. But um, but yeah. Thanks for watching. I put a link somewhere to see all my 2014 movie reviews. But if you like this video and you want to see more, all you have to do is click right here.